brunch next Saturday, Paulette. Paulette and not Paulette. <laughs> Paulette and Naomi. <laughs> Tag team today. So, ladies, we have our ladies' brunch on the 10th, which is next Saturday. Is it next Saturday? Yes, it is already. Okay, next Saturday. So, please see myself and Naomi after service. Um, I'll tell you what we're having to, to eat so you can make up your mind and then let us know afterwards. So, we have X Royale, if that's okay, X Royale, X Florentine, vegan cooked breakfast or a normal English cooked breakfast with a tea or coffee, and that's for £15. All right, so please come and see us, yeah, and <laughs> just thought, just thought I'd, you know, just get us interested in it. So please, please, it'd be lovely for us to come together and just spend some time. Okay, all right, thanks. Brilliant, thank you very much. Okay, Just a couple more things. Um, Stephen Cavanagh's Thanksgiving service. Uh, we're still awaiting completion of the paperwork, for that, so we don't have a date yet. But as soon as we do, we'll obviously let everyone know. And uh, finally, we're going to be having an offering in the next song. But before that, just some scripture. Hebrews 4 verse 16 says, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. I love that word, boldly. That means with confidence. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Amen. Let's take up our offering as we continue to worship. Yeah. And we acknowledge, don't we, that many of us are grieving uh, in this place. That's good. <laughs> and that's right. So let's just stand together in the Lord's presence. If you need to cry, that's fine. You just let it out as that's a safe place. A safe place. Yeah. Let's just acknowledge the presence of the Lord here with us together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you that you comfort those who grieve. Lord, just come, Holy Spirit, and fill this place. Fill our hearts and eyes again. Lord, help us this morning. We thank you. For all that you've done, Jesus. Thank you, Father. There's power in the blood of Jesus. Power in the blood. Oh, hallelujah. There's wonder working power in the blood. There's power in the blood.
greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God, awesome in power, awesome in power, wonder-working power, resurrection power. Lord, we thank you that we can have confidence in you, Lord, that the situation with fake news that has brought violence to our streets, we pray against the enemy who's behind that in Jesus' name. We come against the hatred. We come against, Lord, the racism that is at the very basis of this in our nation and people praying on it. We come against the enemy and the spirit behind it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We're just going to wait on interpretation of that. The Lord is saying, I am the healer. I am the healer. I can heal individual hearts. I can heal groups. I can heal nations. I can heal the whole world. I've done it my way. You may not understand my means. You may not understand why I chose to give the life of my son. But that is my way. That is my way. That is how I am bringing healing healing to you as individuals, healing to nations, healing to this entire world. And as we sing 
this next song, we join in in with something in heaven that's happening. And you know, we're connected to every believer who's gone before in Christ. So for those we're missing this morning, we're connected in the body of Christ. Even though they may not be here physically with us, we are one in Christ. So we're going to sing a thousand generations. A thousand generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the land. All have gone before us.
Within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations and forever and ever. Amen. set apart you are holy no other has sustained life only you you are set apart you are holy no other purged the earth of its imperfection and yet saved a few only you you are set apart you are holy and yet Lord God despite being set apart despite being holy you humbled yourself you came to this earth. No other did that. You are set apart. You are both holy and Emmanuel here with us. Lord God, we just want to thank you that you lowered yourself. We've no idea why. We can never comprehend. And yet, Lord God, we can appreciate and praise and worship you that because of your death, because of your blood, we can come before your throne boldly we can call you Father. We can walk in the freedom that your truth brings and just celebrate your goodness. You are holy, holy, holy. hearts of men 
you have the hearts of men in your hand. You can turn it anywhere you want to. There is nothing that escapes you, Lord God. There is nothing that's above you. No matter what man tries to do in his wickedness, you're above that. No matter what man tries to plan, your sovereignty overrules that. We thank you that you are God. You are God. You are God. And you are God above all of it. We bless you. We honor you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you have said, I am close to the brokenhearted, and I will bind up their wounds. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Take a seat. So, um, just a little thought on when we worship. Just why do we bring the microphone round? There's just two reasons. One is for those who are on the hearing loop so they can hear what's being prayed. And the other is so that people watching at home can hear what you're praying. So I know it feels a bit strange, but if you're about to pray, just pop your hand up. Poor Libby had to run about 100 meters. Um, so just pop your hand up. And then we get the whole prayer or scripture for those of you who are on the hearing loop or at home. All right? That's why we do that. Just a little thought. Okay. Hello. So uh, now is the time for our, um, our children to leave us. Uh, Flame, you're staying in this morning. Um, because it's the summer holidays, things are being done ever so slightly different. So um, all the children um, are heading into the um, garden room, which is through that door and down the corridor in that direction. If you have a child who is under four under four, um, can you stay with your child in the garden room? If you'd rather not take them in there, the rainbow room, which is just sort of at the back of the, the function hall there, is open, but again, can you stay with your child in the rainbow room because there's nobody else to look after them? Right, now we are going to move on to um, a time in our service where we share something called words of knowledge. Um, We've already been singing about this awesome holy God um, who is set apart and yet who is God with us. Um, and uh, his Holy Spirit is within each and every one of us if we know him as Saviour and Lord. And um, he speaks to us through his Holy Spirit. And, and he does that in many different ways. And we've seen some of those ways this morning already where people have um, given a, a, a tongue and a, an interpretation um, of that tongue. Um, and, and sort of prophetic prayers, really, that have come out throughout the service this morning. And words of knowledge is, is just is another gift of the Holy Spirit, where God just sort of pinpoints things in people's 
lives. It, it could be physical things. It could be other things that's going on. Um, just so that he can come and meet with us um, and bring that healing and bring that freedom and bring that restoration because he is a God who loves us and wants us to be set free and set running in him. Um, and we've got um, quite a few words this morning. Um, so uh, there's a sense that God wants to meet with people here who have diabetes this morning. Um, there's people here, at least one person, possibly more, with uh, painful fingers. Um, and also uh, several people who potentially are sort of suffering from dizziness um, caused by the heat. Um, and you know it's caused by the heat, but God still wants to come and meet with you this morning and help you with that. Um, there's uh, sore knees somewhere here this morning, um, sore hips, um, and also um, a sense um, that there's, there's somebody, at least one person again, possibly more, who are just feeling sort of total exhaustion um, and really just need to come and, and have that sort of sense of, of restoration from the Lord this morning. Um, the word jaundice um, and the word frustration and a sense again that that's several people that are, have got a sense of frustration this morning. God wants to meet with you. And also that there are people carrying hurts um, and that hurt is causing resentment um, and it's kind of resentment against the people of God, not necessarily here in this church but resentment against people who are part of God's family and, and God wants to come and, and, and bring healing for that hurt um, and through that healing bring release and help you to um, bring and embrace forgiveness. The word flagging um, and a sense that somebody's waving a flag to try and attract attention um, if that's you um, and that means something to you, God wants to meet with you this morning. Someone pedalling on a bike, um, but the chains come off. Um, and just a sense that there's somebody that's kind of striving to sort of get through every day, but, but they've, they've not realised they've actually, you know, lost the connection with the one that can give them power. And God wants you to come back to him this morning and, and rather than do things in your own strength, actually come and allow him to strengthen you and empower and equip you. Um, and finally, um, a picture um, of someone sort of taunted by faces and incidents from the past. Um, and it's a sense that those things are in darkness and God wants to basically bring you into the light. He wants to deliver you from the fears and from the past. Um, so yeah, there's quite a lot there um, this morning. Um, I'm going to invite, if anybody feels that, that any of those words relate to them, um, like I say, it could be one person, it could be more than one person, um, you now have opportunity to respond. Um, if you could just stand where you are, or if you're unable to stand, raise your hand, just so that we know that, that God's spoken to you this morning. Um, we're not going to ask you at this my time what, 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 what you're standing for. We just want to stand with you and pray with you. If you're around people who are standing up, there's, there's quite a few people standing this morning. Thank you, Lord. Can you just go and maybe stand with, with somebody that's nearby you or reach out a hand to them just so that we can stand with them in prayer um, and then I'll pray. Oh, Jesus, we, we praise you and we worship you for all that you are. We thank you, Lord, that your name is the name above every name. And we know that we can speak your name, Jesus, over each and every situation, over each and every circumstance, over each and every issue that is represented here by people standing this morning. So, Jesus, I just want to speak your name. I speak the name of Jesus over every single person standing up this morning. Lord, I speak your healing in the name of Jesus. I speak your freedom in the name of Jesus. I speak your comfort, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. I speak um, your freedom, Lord God, from, from anger, from pain, and from hurt in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I speak... Um, all that you are, all that, that your name represents of, over each and every person that stands this morning. And we praise you and worship you, Lord, that you are King of Kings and Lord of Lords over every single circumstance, over every single situation. And we look forward, Lord God, to seeing your freedom and your restoration and your healing in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.
So now um, we're moving on um, to probably one of my favourite um, parts of, of our first Sunday service. Um, we have an opportunity now um, really to continue with our song of worship to the Lamb. Um, we are going to give testimony um, to the goodness of God in our lives. Um, God promises, doesn't he, that um, we will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. And that isn't just a promise for tomorrow. It, it's a promise for now. Um, wh wherever we're at, whatever circumstances we're facing, we, we can know God's goodness, the goodness of his comfort, the goodness of his freedom, the goodness of his love, the goodness of his presence. Um, and uh, yeah, we just have an opportunity to lift the name of Jesus high this morning with our testimony. So I don't have anybody um, primed as such, um, but if you'd like to come and give a testimony, Caroline first. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's good to give testimony to our Father in Heaven, who's just so good to us. Um, so um, this week, I had an opportunity for work to um, join a mastermind group. And I'd been thinking, I don't work that well on my own. I'm not that, um, I, like, motivated sometimes. Um, and so some accountability would be really good for me. So this mastermind opportunity came up and there were 12 spaces and I didn't just jump at it straight away because it just took me a bit of courage. I, I had to really weigh it. I had to think, well, if I'm going to join this group, I'm going to need to be active in this group. So I did think about it for a while and then I thought, you know what, let's just be bold. Let's step into this and let's apply. So um, I'm just about to apply. I'd been talking to Paul about it. I went back and then pings up on the WhatsApp group. All the spaces are now full. Um, and my heart just went, oh, you know, like I had this real hopeless, hopelessness kind of wash over me. And then what was stranger was this memory from when I was 16 years old just came up to me and um, came up to, in, in my mind. And, and I was 16 and... Um, they, they were looking, um, there was an opportunity to be head girl at um, school and, <clears throat> you know, I wasn't really that confident. It was something I kind of liked the idea of, but I, I didn't put myself forward and um, you had to kind of have your friends kind of nominate you and none of my friends jumped up and nominated me, so I kind of let it go. Last, like, but then some friends said, I would have nominated you, but I, um, and I said, well, I would have liked you to have nominated me. So they said, well, I'll nominate you then. So it was like, great, okay, get nominated, let's go for it. Um, but there was a deadline, and, um, and my form tutor said, look, deadline is at the beginning of form time, but run along, get that nomination in. And the year head basically turned around and said, you've missed it. Um, you, you can't be nominated, you've had a week and you've missed it. And I have not thought of that for so long, but that whole sense of, um, like hopelessness, um, missing the boat, missing the opportunity, disappointment just came back to me. So I really struggled. So I went for a walk around the field at the back of the house, had a cry, you know, and just thought, Lord, you know, what is this? What is going on? I just feel like I miss it. And I feel like um, disappointment can really derail me. And, um, and I'm still working through it. I don't, I don't fully understand it. Sorry. <clears throat> I still don't fully understand it, but I know <clears throat> that disappointment is kind of rooted in me sometimes. So I need Jesus to really free me from that. Um, so, yeah, and I don't want that to be my... my <laughs> That's exactly what I didn't want to happen, to get all emotional like this, sorry. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I need Jesus to really free me from that and, and work that through and... Um, I don't want it to be my mindset. I don't want it to be limiting me because I know that that's not what the truth is in Jesus and that's not what um, God wants for me. So anyway, I did pray about it. I gave it to God as, as you know, fully as I can and, and did. And you know what? That would have been all right because I got peace. I went back and I thought, right, there, there will be other opportunities. It, it's okay. And, and I could have happily left it there like... Obviously, I need to still need healing and things. But, um, yeah, anyway, the next day, no, I sent a message to this lady just saying, you know, should any opportunities come up to join, you know, please just consider me. And left it at that. And then I was, um, the next evening, I was having a drink with Libby and um, the, um, my WhatsApp uh, message went, 
And the lady who is doing this whilst my group said, great news, Caroline, I've decided to extend the amount of people in this group to 15, apply and you're in. So on this occasion, God has opened up the door for me and I'm really thankful and I just feel like it's him you know, give me that little bit of extra encouragement um, and a, a kind of an answer to prayer, but just God being good. You know, he loves us and he cares about everything about us, really. So, yeah. Mm. Oh, Amen. <laughs> so, yeah, Lord, we just want to thank you that you are a loving, good father. We want to thank you that you know us. You know us better than we know ourselves. That, Lord, you know where we need healing. You know where we need freedom. You know uh, when we're ready for you to bring up those memories, for you to, uh, to start to deal with, with those past hurts and those past situations, Lord. And I thank you um, that when you bring us to that place, it's, it's, it's not to cause harm, Lord. It's always to release. It's always to free because you are a restoring God. You are a God that wants to restore us to all that we are created to be in you. And I thank you for Caroline, Lord. I thank you for her openness. I thank you for her vulnerability. I thank you that she stood here this morning and been real before you and before us. I thank you for her courage. And Lord, I just pray that you would continue that work of healing, that work of of freedom, that work of restoration in her life. We pray your blessing. We pray your anointing. We pray you're equipping on her for all that she is, for all that she is now, for all that she will be and do for you moving forward, Lord God. Most of all, Lord God, we just pray that she would uh, continue to grow and root herself in you and in your love for her. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Joy. So last week, as this week, there was a word about painful knees, and I'd been having painful knees for quite a few weeks, but um, I stood up for prayer, and I've had no pain in my knees this week. Amen. Oh, Father, thank you that you're a healing God. Um, Thank you for this healing, Lord God. Thank you that you have moved and you have brought this physical healing um, to joy. And we just pray that she would continue to know your presence with her. She would continue to see you at work in her heart and in her life, Lord, especially at this time. Um, But, Father, every day that she would continue uh, to see you move, continue to see you work, Lord God, and continue to be able to stand and give glory to your goodness. In Jesus' name. Amen. Helen. Uh, just as some of you know that some of us go out on a Wednesday morning. Um, doesn't, I don't think it matters who goes, to be honest. I think it's just because God is at work. And on Wednesday, there were eight people, five different churches, Um, and we went off, we went out, but this week seemed to be sort of almost more open and different. Uh, It was very hot. Stephen had bought some bottles of water, and we had a spare, and I felt sure that that bottle was for somebody, and uh, we, anyway, were in the square, and there was someone collecting for charity. He was pouring with sweat, and I said, have you got water with you? And to my amazement, no, he hadn't, and he had a, like a, almost like a, what's it called, a vest thing on? Uh, What's it, that? That's the waistcoat. Uh, So completely inappropriate. Um, Anyway, I said, this is for you. And he said, no, no. And I said, no, it's for you. And he took it. So I said something like, gift of God is free. And it just opened up a conversation. And he said, well, what are you doing? He never mentioned the charity that he was supposed to be working for. What are you doing? So we said what we were doing. And we had an amazing conversation, had lots of questions, but he was like um, like a ripe plum, just ready to be taken. And we talked about Jesus, he was actually a Sikh, uh, and he said, well, I'm getting really interested in Christianity, and we, we talked about the cross. He knew a lot, and then eventually we and said, well, actually, you, you could give your life to Jesus if you want to. Yes, 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 he wanted to. <laughs> And he prayed, the, he said, well, pray the prayer with you. No, no, I'm all right, I'll pray the prayer. 
And it was, it was just mind-blowing, really, because God was there. And all of you who pray, this is the result of all your prayer. And not just that, but there were two other guys um, approached a, another couple who were on the team and said, what are you doing? Because they were praying on the mound. What are you doing? Will you pray for Southport? Yes. After that, will you pray for us? And she, they led them into the kingdom as well. So it's like a different... There's a different thing going on, you know, and it's, it's wonderful, isn't it? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Father God, you are such a good, good God. Lord, we praise you and worship you for every single um, new person who has come into your kingdom, who is now part um, of the family of the kingdom of God, Lord. We praise you and you worship you for each and every one of those people, Lord. And we just pray that you would continue to be at work in their hearts and their lives, Lord, that they would continue to grow in their relationship with you um, and, and Jesus, knowing who you are as their personal saviour and their personal Lord. We thank you, God, that there are no accidents in you. We praise you and worship you, Lord God, for this divine opportunity, Lord God, that you brought for, for Helen um, on Wednesday, Lord, and for the many opportunities that there are to speak for people as, 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 as Helen, as Stephen and others go out on the street. And Lord, we just pray your continued anointing. We pray your continued equipping, Lord. Um, and Father, yeah, we do continue to pray that you would go before them. Uh, that you would prepare a way, that you would open a way, that, Lord God, we would see you move in ways that are more than we could ask or possibly imagine, Lord God, um, and that um, we would see many more, many more come into your kingdom and come to know you as Saviour and Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we've probably got time for one more quick one if anybody has one to give. Chris. Thank you. So uh, most of you, I think, are aware that uh, my mom died recently, and it was her funeral on Tuesday this week. And I just wanted to share something that was really inspiring that I heard there that I didn't actually know beforehand, which was that my mom, well, I knew this bit, where for many years my mom suffered with very severe depression, um, right from all through my childhood and adult years, um, to the point of being suicidal at times. And this was such a burden for her. And she would, often when she came to church, just sit out in the foyer. She wouldn't come into the main meeting. She wouldn't talk to people. She'd go home right at the end of the service before the teas and coffees so no one would, she wouldn't have to talk to anyone. And when the diagnosis of uh, cancer came about two years ago, this became a pivotal moment. Um, God did something through that. She went on a, a Freedom in Christ course and her, her whole character was completely changed. What should have been such a terrible moment became such a positive moment for the kingdom. She became so engaged in that church. She uh, was there almost every day of the week in one way or another, and uh, you couldn't keep her away. And she was bringing people in and bringing people into the kingdom. And those that wouldn't normally come into church, people struggling with addiction or with disabilities, learning difficulties, all sorts. She was drawing them in, and uh, she had her gang, as they called it. And it was just such a miracle to see how God had taken this person who for, yeah, the majority of her life had just sat out and not interacted with anyone to uh, become such a centerpiece in that church, and God had used her so well. Oh, Father, we, we praise you that, that you work all things together for the good of those that love you and who are called according to your purpose, Lord. And I, I thank you that there isn't a single situation or circumstance that, Lord, you um, are not working within, Lord God, uh, to bring about freedom, to bring about healing, to bring about restoration, to bring about um, your plans and your purposes, Lord. We thank you for Chris's mum, Lord. We thank you for, um, for all that you did um, in terms of bringing healing to her, Lord, and, and through that healing, um, how she was then able to, to bring your healing and, and your restoration and your life to others. Um, Lord, we pray for Chris um, and for Rachel um, and for uh, the rest of Chris's family, Lord, as, as, they, as they grieve and, and they mourn 
um, Chris's mum's loss, um, Lord. Um, but Lord, we thank you that she is with you, that um, she is dancing in heaven, um, and that, Lord, she has heard you say to her, well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. Amen. Right, so now Darren's going to come and uh, lead us in communion and wrap up. I don't know if you want people to... One, two, one, two. You got me? One, two. Hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Yay! Okay. Brilliant. Um, right. If you've got a Bible, you want to grab that. I've got a PowerPoint as well I'm going to be showing. If we could get that up, that'd be great. Um, and turn to 1 Kings chapter 19. If you want to, there's some church Bibles over here or here. If you need to grab hold of uh, one of those, brilliant. And um, so it's been great this morning. And just aware, and especially if you haven't been here before, I was very aware that there were those who recently have been experiencing loss. There are those who are grieving, been recently bereaved, and such like. And um, so I, I thought it was just quite appropriate to actually just briefly chat about that as we lead into communion together. And hopefully this will work. Is it working? No, I might have to get someone to do it for me. There it is, yeah. And I've called this God's Resources in Loss. Or a different one. Next slide, please. Where is God when it hurts? Where is God when it hurts? Because in life it's inevitable we experience disappointment or some kind of loss. And whether that is personal or not, we'll often find ourselves in situations we have absolutely no control over. But what we can control is how we choose to respond and uh, I was thinking about this because there are, when we think of loss, there, there are different types, aren't there? And there's what you would call like a concrete loss, something like someone passing away, um, someone, you know, finding that your, your car's been stolen, um, the ending of a marriage, concrete loss, ill health. I mean, you can't do things. There are those concrete things which you can definitely say there's a sense of loss there. But there's also, there are abstract losses, aren't there? Loss of reputation, confidence, self-esteem, even faith. And these are, are things that, that aren't always seen but can just feel just as real. And we can feel loss due to often like a missed opportunity. And I thought, Caroline, your, your testimony was so appropriate because I, as I was putting this together, I then, you know, I remembered when I was, uh, when I was 17 years old and I was uh, working at a company. I, people might know who I was trained to be a paint and de decorator. An opportunity for an apprenticeship came up. And at this place working, this 17-year-old Darren, with my best mate, Jason, and we heard that this opportunity, you know, to go on this apprenticeship was there. So we both kind of just put our names forward. And you're probably going to guess what happened, aren't you? Yeah. And then I remember being told that, you know, I, I hadn't got it. And Jason had. And he felt really bad talking to me about it because he was my best mate. And there was a sense of a loss, even though I hadn't done it. As it were, you know, there was a loss of opportunity. And sometimes we can feel that maybe in, you know, going for a job interview or, or looking back on a relationship. 
you know, I wonder what would have happened if. So loss is never neutral. The feelings of result will come out sooner or later, and if you're not careful, they can lead to regret, disappointment, and hurt. Now, one thing I am aware, and and lots of other people are aware in pastoral ministry, is that if someone's going through a difficult time, your pain is your pain. What do I mean by that? Well, if you're going through some sort of loss, whilst you can, you know, someone can relate to it, they might say, well, this happened to me, but it's not the same. And uh, I heard this great quote once where it said, no matter how hard we try, we cannot put ourselves in someone else's shoes. Or we can try, but we still feel our own feet. You know, and, and in that sense, pain is quite an individual thing, depending on the circumstance for that person. But that doesn't mean that the family of God can't come together and support one another in those times. And any kind of loss can be worked through with God's help. So where is God when things go wrong for us? How do we recover from things when facing challenges? Because it's vital that in those situations we have a realistic, biblical understanding of God and his nature. And God's dealings with Elijah here in uh, 1 Kings 19 is an excellent example of this. Now, just a little bit of background. Some of you may have heard the story of Elijah and the prophets of Baal. And up there, and you know, they, it was like a test to see whose God was real. And this amazing amazing account of how Elijah was so confident you know he told them to pour buckets of water onto the sacrifice and then he prayed to God and it just says this fire came from heaven and I'm pretty sure in the uh, in the old version it says the water you know the fire licked up the water that there was nothing left it was utterly destroyed and everyone fell on their faces saying the Lord he is God and it was this high point of victory and right at that highest point and often at our highest point can be where we're weakest this is what happened next so if you're if you've got your Bible let's follow this in 1 Kings 19 verse 1 And Ahab, that's the king, told Jezebel, his wife, all that Elijah had done. Also how he'd executed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a message to Elijah saying, So let let the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw it, he arose and ran for his life and went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he prayed that he might die and said, It is enough. Now, Lord, take my life, for I'm no better than my father's. And as he lay and slept under a broom tree, suddenly an angel touched him and said, Arise and eat. Then he looked, and there by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came back the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for you. So he arose and ate and drank, and he went into the strength of that food forty days and forty nights, as far as Horeb, the mountain of God. And there he went into a cave and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? So he said, I've been very zealous for the Lord of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, killed your prophets with the sword. I alone are left, and they seek to take my life. Then he said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. 
And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. So it was, when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. Suddenly a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I've been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant torn down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. Then the Lord said to him, Go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, anoint King Hazael as king over Syria. And you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel, Meholah, you shall anoint as prophet in your place. And it shall be that whoever escapes the sword of Hezel, Jehu, will kill. And whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha, will kill. Yet I have reserved 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to Baal, every mouth that has not kissed him. So let's look at God, what God does in this situation. Next slide, please. Because the first thing we, 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 we see is God's concern. And that is that God doesn't chide Elijah. Okay? He doesn't tell him off. And we shouldn't feel ashamed of feeling hurt. Sometimes I say, if something hurts, if something's painful, if something's difficult, we need to be real about that. It's good to be real in our emotions. Not so long ago, I was talking to someone, and they said, I'm really fed up, and I'm going to give God a piece of my mind. And to their surprise, I said, amen, go for it. Because, you know, God's big enough to hear that. He wants to hear that. He wants to hear that. And it's not a bad thing. If you're feeling hurt and upset, don't feel ashamed of that. As I've often said, you know, when we go, when we read the Psalms together and that, you know, we joke about stopping just before the nasty bit, don't we? (laughs) You know, about smiting enemies. However, King David, isn't it amazing? He turned his pain into something of beauty for the Lord. He was able to pour his heart out to God. And so we should be ready to do the same. We shouldn't feel ashamed of feeling hurt. If something hurts, if it's real, it hurts. But the second thing we see, next, next one please, is God's provision. Okay? Elijah was tired and hungry. So what did God do? Yeah, he fed him and gave him rest, didn't he? It seems really simple. He didn't, he didn't give him some verses of scripture He gave him rest, and he gave him food. And we sometimes need immediate help. What do we need right now? What are those practical things? And I'm, you know, I'm learning more and more as we do this together that when people are are struggling those times of, of hurt, those times of bereavement, very simple question. Are you eating well? Have you got food? Do you need some some help with that? Just those practical needs. Because those things affect our feelings as well, don't they? In terms of our bodies. So God gives him rest and gives him food. Because right there and then, that's what he needed the most. And thirdly, next one please, God's assurance. God speaks through that quiet voice. I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still here to speak to you. Now, just as an aside on that, all right, because I've heard some people say, oh, yes, God, you know, he always speaks through that still, small voice. No, he doesn't, okay? There are times when God does speak through the earthquake and the wind and the fire, okay? This is just one time where he did it in a different way. God can speak any way he wants. The important thing is that when, 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 when Elijah heard it, he knew it was time to go out to the cave and listen. So Elijah thought he was running away. He thought he was running away. 
but God was there to meet him. And it's okay when things go wrong. When we come to the end of ourselves, that's where Jesus lives. That's where he is, waiting for us. You know, we've all heard, read, you know, John 4, the woman at the well. She was someone who'd come to the end of herself, and there was Jesus waiting for her. And then you almost have this sense of like a, like a tennis match between Elijah and God in terms of things. Let's have the next slide up, please. Thank you. And we have Elijah's cry and then God's response. So Elijah first says, evil is winning. But then God says, there will be judgment. And then Elijah says, I'm the only one left. And God says, there are 7,000 others. And then Elijah says, they want to kill me too. And God says, my work will go on. God's assurance coming to Elijah. In each thing he has to say, God has a reply So it might be said overall that Scripture has far more to say about people's character than their gifting. In the wilderness temptation of Jesus, some of the issues and choices he faced were to do with character. And perhaps that's no coincidence that the story appears at the outset of his ministry. In Genesis 32, verses 24 to 32, we read read of Jacob wrestling with, with the angel of God. And it's a wrestling that each of us will go through, and the battleground is personal character. Character is easier kept than recovered. And it might surprise you to know that that battle is not a fight that God can win. It's not a victory he can impose on us, however long the fight goes on. It only happens through our willing Surrender. Jesus said in the garden, not my will, but yours be done. Even Jesus submitted his will to that of the Father. Just lastly, a couple of verses on, on the screen here. Psalm 103, 13 and 14, it says, As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. We are such fragile creatures. And yet our loving father knows that. He has compassion on us. He knows how quickly we can be shaken, how quickly we can struggle. We're known to God and his expectations are founded in understanding our being. Why? Because he made us. He is the one who created us. And finally, next verse. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. God saw us before anyone else saw us and loved us and loved us. So as we move now to a time of breaking bread together, it's just to remember that, that he's a God of compassion, He knows what it's like to suffer. He knows what it's like to grieve. And we see that most of all in his son, Jesus Christ. Those words on the cross, I've I've said this before. We, We hear of Jesus going through every human experience. Experience humanity in every single way. But there was one final thing that he hadn't experienced 
And that was what it weren't meant to be utterly alone. And I, I don't understand this. I can't make sense of it. But, you know, in, within God's sovereignty and amazing power, somehow, in a moment in time, the Father turns his back on the Son. And Jesus knows what it is. Be alone. And cries out, my Father, my Father, why have you forsaken me? So to anyone who feels hurt when you feel alone, I believe that gives hope. That gives hope. He knows what that feels like. He knows what it is when we feel on our own. And the good news is that we're never alone. That we're never alone. question I've asked before, why didn't the resurrected Jesus get rid of his scars? Why didn't he get rid of his scars? He had a resurrected body after all. He didn't need to have them, did he? Didn't need to have them. For whose sake? Thomas, put your hand here, here. See believe and just like David you know thousands of years ago turned his pain into something beautiful so Jesus wears those scars as a trophy of God's grace to give us hope and there's a man in heaven and he still has those scars he still has that wound on his side and that gives hope for you and for me, we worship a risen Savior. Let's move now into time just to break bread together and to give thanks, to recognize him as that risen Savior. I'm just going to invite the band to come up and invite you just to come and take the bread and the cup. But just hold it, okay, until... And we're going to eat and drink together. So if you're a believer, if you know the Lord Jesus as your saviour, please come and take as the band come and play.
we come and take I was just thinking it says his body was broken for us I don't believe that's just a physical breaking Jesus knows what it is to have a a broken heart as well to feel that sense because it says every sin was laid on him. Every sin. That means the sin of despair, the sin of hopelessness, the sin of guilt, the sin of shame. He knows what it's like. We have a great high priest who empathizes with our every weakness. As it says, he knows how we're formed. He knows that we're so fragile. And it was that fragile body of Christ that surrendered to those cruel nails. So we thank him again. We thank you, Jesus, that your body was broken for us. And we take, we eat, we remember, and we give thanks. We also drink (coughs) the wine of the new covenant. This new agreement between God and man. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins that we can drink forgiven with the assurance that a day will come where we won't just be eating bread and drinking wine. We'll be at the wedding feast of the Lamb that we won't need to remember him because he'll be there right in front of us. And as said, we all get first place at the table. So let's give thanks. His blood was shed for us. So Lord Jesus, thank you that you know what it is to go through pain, hurt, loss, You know what it is to be bereaved. When Lazarus died, you you wept at the death of your friend. Help us. Heal us, Lord. Help us as a family as we lift up and support one another. And Lord, the best thing we can do for each other is to point one another to Jesus. Say, to look to him that he will be the God of peace and comfort for all of us. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So as we come to close, as always, if you'd like any further prayer on anything that I've said this morning, and if you're in that place of pain and hurting, then that might be hard, but We'd love to be able to pray for you and to stand with you in that. And also a reminder of those words of knowledge. And if you stood for any of those and would like further prayer, then please again come and make yourselves known to us. We'll just go ask the ministry team, just come and make yourselves known. Then we're going to come back and just have some gentle worship. As we say, we're having our... Soft, intentional landing, as I like to call it these days. So we're soft close. If you want to stick around and and talk with people, that's great. But if you do want to receive prayer, please come and make yourselves known, and we'll pray for you. God bless you.